again. This is a, a, a series of three talks. This is the third talk. The first talk, as you all remember, was about initiation into running. The second talk was about nutrition. And the third talk will be about the race preparation, or the actual race day. Um, but first of all, um, it's really great to see that you've all made it here. Um, we started 15 weeks ago. You all didn't know what was going to happen. You just went in it. Uh, you know, and it was a whole new experience for you. Um, most of you are running your first half marathon or your first race in general, so you might already start to feel a bit nervous. Um, probably some of you will also have some aches and pains already. Um, it's uh, the result of the, of the hundreds of miles that you've been preparing for this race. Um, so you can also imagine how that would be if, you know, next year we'll be running half the full marathon. Okay, so it's double. Um, but anyway, I think you can be really proud that you've made it uh, till here so far. Um, I think the company can be very proud, and I think also you as a person can be very proud because you did do this, you, you, you went in it uh, without knowing what it was going to be like, and now you're here. Last talk about you know, how we're going to finish this race. Um, but apart from that, you also learned a lot of new things. You learned about training, you learned about preparation, you learned about pushing yourself, you learned about staying with it. You know, there's a lot of new things that you've experienced. Um, and I think also you made a lot of new friends um, within the company. I think this has really helped to, to build like a, big, uh, like a big clique, you know, of, of people who are doing the same thing, having the same goal, endure the same thing. I think it's really good for a company to have done this for you and now you've seen the results of it as well. I think um, you will definitely notice that. Um, and lastly, you probably have lost a bit of weight and he or she didn't. Well, <laughs> we should talk about that in the next seminar. Um, you gained a lot of strength and endurance. And I remember in the first talk that we were talking about the fact that when you start running the first two weeks, were the hardest because you go from zero to putting your your, your body under a certain strain. Have you also probably you will probably also have noticed that after those two weeks you come into a flow and it, it is still hard and you still push yourself, but it's not the same anymore because you've given your body the beginners like pain and now you have the finishers pain. <laughs> um, so. As the Chinese proverb says, you know, every uh, journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Well, you made that first step. I think that, you know, everybody can thank the company for having helped you with making that first step. And um, now let's start about the race, because in a week time, that's what's going to happen. Probably most of you will have a lot of questions so far. You know, what should I do? What should I not do? What should I eat? And, um, you know. How should I prepare for such a race? And it is true that, um, you know, in the last week, you can also make a lot of mistakes still. And there's a lot of people that make mistakes so that on the last day, they're not present on the race. Um, I think in your case, that hasn't happened because you have been under the guidance of a, of a team of professionals. <coughs> a lot of marathon runners, um, they actually hurt themselves that last day. Because what you probably feel is that your body, having endured all those hundreds of miles, you know, will have some aches and pains in, 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 in some places. Haven't you done the strength sessions, probably half of you wouldn't have been here. That's why we offered the company to do these strength sessions to build up about the body, to balance out the muscular system, so that those aches and pains stay limited. Okay. Um, but still, Keep the questions that you have till the end. We'll have the question and answer round. Okay? Now I'm going to talk a bit about the physical preparation and the mental preparation of the race. So you have, the, you have taken the main hurdle and you've accumulated a lot of mileage. You have improved your body, your body physically a lot, cardiovascularly a lot. Um, but now it's time to look at okay, what are we going to do this last week? Because the body is also tired. So, first of all, you need to rest. But rest doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing anything. Rest before you started this project was not doing anything. Rest now is doing a small run, doing some stretches, some gentle running, swimming, or bike riding. Okay? So 
for last week, starting Monday, and um, what you want to do is, you want to do uh, one running session, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a gentle running session, we're not going to do any more sprints or series, etc. We're just going <laughs> to let the body, let all that strain get out of the body. And then, instead of a strength session next week, we will be doing a stretching session. We will warm up properly, and then we will do some proper stretching. So that the body, when it comes towards the race, is really uh, well and relaxed. Okay? As from Thursday, after Thursday, you don't want to be doing anything anymore. Okay? On uh, Friday, try to have a good sleep, because on Saturday, probably you won't. You will feel nervous. So use that Friday to have your sleep. Don't go party on Friday, please, okay? Um, the, and then you, the, the Saturday and the Friday are very important for you to start to eat well and to hydrate, to drink water, to get enough water into your system. Because on the racing day, you don't want to do that. You don't want to overload your body. Okay, so you need to really prepare well up these days before the race so that when you get on that Sunday morning, you wake up, your body's there. Okay. Um, food recommendations. Well, as I said, you have to fuel your body right. So I would definitely eat as much as you can healthy, fresh, and pro uh, unprocessed foods. If you have carbs, because you probably all heard about the fact that um, runners before the race should have a bit more carbs. If you have carbs, make sure that they're brown rice, brown pasta, maybe some sweet potatoes the day before the race. But also don't overdo it. Okay, because you know the, the pasta party, some people overdo it and they are, they are dragging three kilo extra along in the racing day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people, you know, if you give them a carb lunch just to eat, you know, they say, oh yeah, let's, let's have it. Um, what is very important is that you, that you eat, what I said before, fresh and unprocessed food. Because if you have too many processed foods, what will happen is that it will spike your insulin levels, as I had said before, and it will drop them very far. But you will need energy for at least two hours, I would say, for most of you. Okay? And a lot of energy. <laughs> okay? So if you, if you have uh, um, processed foods, you have too many uh, fast carbs, then what will happen is that by the end of the race, at kilometer 14 to 16, all of a sudden there's an energy leak. There's nothing left. There won't be, any, there won't be much left anyway. So you want to have that little bit left to end the race. Okay, so make sure to have full wheat uh, pasta, to have brown rice, and, and maybe some sweet potatoes. On the other hand, don't start experimenting. Now thinking that you're a fully fledged runner, and you go into the internet and say, oh, they eat that, they eat such and they eat so. Don't, don't introduce anything new to the body the day before, because you might pay the bill for that. Okay. And then on the night before the race, 60 to 65 percent of your meal can be carbs. Okay, so you know, pasta. If you have brown pasta, you can add some chicken to it or some tuna, some olive oil. Keep it light and keep it unprocessed as much as you can. Okay. And for those who have done racing before, are there any people here who have done half marathon or something before? Okay. Uh, there are some supplements that you can use. I don't want to discuss them right now. Uh, if you want to improve your mark, but we can talk to you about that after the, after the talk. Okay, if you want. So, on the race day itself, get up early. Okay, because if you get up too late, your body needs time to get your metabolism going. Okay, so wake up two and a half hours, two hours, two and a half hours before the actual race. And then have a proper breakfast. Have some oatmeal, some cereal, some toast, some fruits, okay? Because that will give you time to activate your metabolism and to digest the foods. And when you digest the foods, you probably have to go to the toilet. <coughs> yes, both number one and number two should be done before the race. <laughs> and then on, this, on the day itself, try to drink small amounts. So don't, don't, don't do get up in the morning and have half a liter or a liter of water because you'll be going to the toilet you know, for the rest of that morning and that won't be, you don't want to feel right during the race. So have more water or liquid the days coming up to the race and then on the race day itself just have sips regularly but just small sips. The same goes for during the race.
And then what is very important is that even if you're not thirsty, because sometimes you're nervous, you're not hungry, you're not thirsty, you know, force yourself to eat something and force yourself to drink small amounts regularly, every like 20, 30 minutes, okay? Then caffeinated drinks. I know that uh, we're talking to uh, people that, that work in an office and I know that coffee is the number one drug. Um, try to limit your coffee intake to like one cup. And those who don't drink coffee, don't start drinking coffee. <laughs> your body is not used to that. Okay, that's so far to the physical preparation. If you have any questions, write them down. Okay? Because we're going we're gonna to do Q&A afterwards. The mental preparation. And we're talking more about like nerves. Because many of you, it's your first race, you will be nervous. So what I would recommend <laughs> is to try to stay calm because you've prepared really, really well. You've done two sessions with us every week, then you've done your long runs and maybe some extra runs on the side. You are well prepared, okay? And if there's nothing strange happening, like a flu or anything, you are going to run that race. <coughs> no doubt about it, okay? For the competitive people under us, because there's always those that are a bit more competitive, try not to go with the people that are running in front because they run the race in one hour and will probably be dead by turnover number five. What I'm trying to say is, don't, if somebody runs faster than you, don't, don't hold up on, on them, to, uh, especially in the beginning. At the end of the race, you might, you might clinch on to somebody who has a good pace on it and you're tired. But in the beginning, it's most important to start slowly. I think I, I, I uh, told you when we started the, uh, the, on the first talk, that whenever you start, you start slowly. The first two miles, the first, two, uh, the first three mi uh, kilometers or two miles are a bit more slowly because you still need your metabolism to, you know, to get started. Um, but then, after that, run your own pace. And if you have a buddy that you run with and you run the same pace, you, know, you can run together. Don't make the mistake that if you know, your, your buddy has a bad day or, or has a good day and you have a bad day, to stick with the, the person. Because you need to run your own pace whatsoever. Okay? And only at the end, when you, when you pass kilometer uh, 16, is when you can start to feel, okay, now we're coming to the end, five kilometers left, okay, I can do this, I can go faster, or I, or I, or I can't. You'll feel your body. Okay? On the other hand, um, don't burn too much energy being too excited. <laughs> because that's also an energy leak. Okay? And if you're overly nervous, if you're extremely nervous, which some people have, some people have that on the racing day, it's their first race, you know, and they get really nervous. Well, try to do some visualization techniques, you know, think about you've done already three, four hundred kilometers of running, you can do 21 more. Okay, some breathing techniques, maybe on the Saturday, take some time for yourself, yeah? If you have a very stressful husband or wife, you know, tell them that you have to do some preparation. Yeah. And if they don't understand, then just go. <laughs> that really works. Um, and then, or get into the fresh air. Go to the seaside, do a, do a walk at the seaside, but try to calm your nerves down a bit. I think that's the most important thing uh, for the mental preparation. Apart from that, I think it's also important that you guys motivate each other. You've really made this into a group thing, and I think you've, you know, you've built a lot of bridges between the partners, you've made friends uh, during this time. You know, WhatsApp or message your, your friends or your colleagues, you know, motivate them also the day before the race, you know, because I think it's a really nice thing to do. Tips and tricks. Now here it comes. If it's a cold day, what many runners do is they bring an old t-shirt or an old long sleeve that they wear when they start the race. Because sometimes it can be very cold. And what you want to do is you want to start running with that and when you get too warm, because you're going to, you know it's a long race, you, 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 know, you won't need that anymore, you just can jump it away. So that's a good tip. If, you, if it's really cold on the day, just wear an old t-shirt or long sleeve. Then to warm up five to ten minutes before the race. And I don't mean start sprinting like an idiot, because you need that energy. <laughs> but start slowly, work progressively, and 
and then five to ten minutes and uh, the quarter race, you, you, are, you will be warmed up a little bit already. And then do some gentle stretches if you need it. If you feel that your muscles are really tight or tense or you feel a pain, do some gentle stretches. Don't overstretch because you know you might hurt yourself, but very gently you can stretch into the muscle that is that is painful. Then I also told you in the first um, in the first talk that normally what you try to do is when you go uphill you run faster, and the second part of the race you try to run it faster than the first part. So when you try to run the second part of the race faster than the first part, what will happen is that you automatically are obliged to to start a bit slower. So if you really, those first three kilometers or those first two miles, you start a bit slower, then normally the second part of the, of the race will have that extra energy and can run a little bit faster. Okay? But maybe if this is your first race, maybe it's just about finishing. <laughs> maybe, getting, maybe getting a bit too excited about it. <laughs> and sometimes in a race, the mind starts to play up because there's no more glucose in your body, you're getting really tired, everything hurts, you're getting cramped because maybe you did something wrong in the, in the days leading up to the race. And you start, oh my god, still 12 kilometers to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Try to think about what you've already done instead of what's ahead. I think that's a very good visualization of, of and, and to stay positive about you know what's what, what's to come. If you're gonna think like that at that point, you might as well stop. Okay? Your bodies are tired now, you have trained it really well. They are tired, so give them the, that time to rest. Now in the, in the days coming up, don't go and do strange things like run another 15k as fast as you can and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that because I think you will do it, but there are people that have done that. I've trained groups for marathons that came to me the day before and they couldn't walk because they didn't listen to the advice that was given to them, okay? So don't be stubborn, give your body that rest. I know you're excited, I know you feel fit and strong, but you know, now it's time to give the body a bit of rest. Again, with starting too fast, because I said you have to start slow to, to get your body into a certain metabolism, you know? But some people get this, what's called beginner's or uh, a starter's euphoria. Which means that you start a race and you're like, oh yeah, here I am, I'm going to get it. And they start so fast and their metabolism is still not up that they burn an awful lot of glycogen of their body. Because the, the, the body is still not ready for that. So if you start too fast, you'll pay the bill at the end of the race. Now, a critical moment in the race, it's also called the no man's land. And in a marathon, it's about 30, 50, 50, 50, 20 and 30 kilometers. 20 and 35 kilometers. Here is between, I would say, kilometer 11 and 14. It's called no man's land. It's like, you know, you still have quite a bit ahead. Um, and at this time, you know, the mind can start playing tricks on you. Um, if you get tired, if you get pains or aches or, you know, what you should do in this, in this period is slow down because you will make up at the end. When there's all the people towards the finish line standing and, and, and applauding for you running by, that will give you a lot of energy and you will run much faster. So I think the most important thing is for you guys to make it to kilometer uh, 60. I think that is for now the most important. To get well to kilometer 60. So if at kilometer 12 you feel tired, you, your mind is playing tricks on you, just say, okay, I have to make it to kilometer 60 because then there's people appearing. And they start applauding, and, and then you know it's only five, you know, you've done 75% of the race. Um, gels and snacks, they are necessary during the race, or I would say at least some food sources. Um, gels and snacks, I would say take one at kilometer 10, and take another one at kilometer 17. Okay, you can also have some uh, dry foods like, uh, like figs. Stuff like that, that always works very well. The only thing is they are they don't absorb so fast as uh, as the gels do. Then we, we talked about hydration, we talked about drinking during the race, and there are like refreshing points every so many kilometers. Try to just have in the beginning I don't think it's, it's that necessary, but from kilometer ten or from kilometer eight, try to just you know get a little sip at every moment. 
instead of water or an isotonic drink, but drink something because you're going to need that. You know, you will lose quite a lot of electrolytes uh, during the race, and you will, you will need also a lot of uh, water. But if you don't have the gels, have an isotonic drink. If you have the gels, you can just have plain water. Breeding techniques is also something that we talked about during the first uh, talk. Um, I don't know if you experienced, uh, experimented with it, but we, we talked about a one step in, one step out technique, two steps in, two steps out, three steps in, three steps out, and breeding between the, the nose and the mouth and the mouth and the mouth. So nose in, mouth out, or mouth in, mouth out. Now at the race, it's important that as much oxygen as possible reaches your lungs and your your system. So there's no more nose technique now. We're not training anymore. So try to get as much oxygen as you can by breathing in through your mouth and breathing out through your mouth. Some people have this like extraordinary anatomy of the nose and they can breathe a lot of air in through the nose. Most people can't. And so try to keep the mouth in mouth out pace. Um, as soon as you start noticing that your, uh, your breathing goes faster than uh, uh, two steps in, two steps out, so I mean two steps in, one step out, one step in, uh, one step in, one step out, that means that you're going too fast. We talked about it as well in training, that's okay because you're boosting your, your uh, physical condition, you're boosting your cardiovascular condition, but during the race you want to get that rhythm going. So don't go below two steps in, two steps out for breathing. Then we talked also about, I, I remember this very well because you were laughing about it. I said that you could recover during a run. Because you were quite unfit when you started, believe it or not. That's what my trainers told me at least. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that now you are so fit that actually by pacing down a little bit, you can recover. So that's what I just mentioned in kilometer 12 to 16. Is that if you try, if you know, take a step back because you will have the extra at the end of the race, but you will be able to recover while running. And if one of you is going to do a marathon, a real big marathon one day, that's what you're going to need. You're going to have to listen to your body and know when it's time to take your, to take your pace down a bit, to let your body recover while running, and then go, go faster. And another thing regarding technique is that we talked about the midline for the arms, so that the arms don't cross, you don't lose much energy, you keep your body upright so your diaphragm so can go nice and deep, okay? otherwise you have shallow breathing and you won't get as much oxygen as you can. These are just little refresher points, you know, to think about your posture, to think about, you know, um, restraining the, the side rotation of the body while running, okay? Just think about it because maybe you forgot. And then, of course, what's to do when it's over? Because, you know, there's this gap. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's not there anymore. My uh, advice would be, you know, take a couple of days off. Don't stop running. Keep, keep the good uh, habits going. And maybe set a new goal. And I don't know if you've thought about anything, but there are numerous races in, in Barcelona. On the 20th of April, there is the Cursa de Bomberos which is a 10K, it's only 10K for you guys, that is nothing. So you can even you know, go for a, fit, for a fast mark on the 10K. And then on the 25th of May, there is a really nice mountain race, a running race near Berga, with about 3,000 uh, meters in altitude difference, and it's 26 kilometers in the mountain. So it's only seven kilometers or, or six kilometers. So, I mean, we have two months. So, but, I mean, set some new goals, because I don't think that it should end here. You've done something really good for your body, and, and I think the company did something really nice for you. <coughs> don't leave it here. I think you should do something with what you build up right now. So, that's for me what I wanted to tell you today. I want to wish you all very much of luck on behalf of my team of Activate, and probably also on behalf of AP. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. So, sure. Yes? When we talk about hydration, are we always just talking about skilled water? Is it okay to drink aquaponga, juices? 
Yeah, but what I would stay away from are like sodas, sugar drinks, um, but also like uh, orange juice, apple juice. Often they have like added sugars, but they are they are 100% carbs and quite fast carbs. So you know, if you have, uh, for example, orange juice, what I would recommend definitely the day before and on the racing day, you can maybe do half 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 water, half orange juice. Okay. But I would normally stay with, with water, sparkling water, but nothing sugar, no sodas, um, and nothing too much of like caffeinated drinks. Um, okay. No, they normally have like cut uh, oranges. So you can directly kind of bite of the orange, and they have cups of water or isotonic drink. So you can choose to have either water or an isotonic drink. Yeah. Everyone's five or it depends on the race. I think it's every every after two and ten. A half, actually, it's after ten. The 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 oranges is between the ten and fifteen kilometers. Yes, yeah. it's later in the race, not in the beginning. No, at the five days it's just water. Well, just water. Yeah. So it's just water. Is anybody injured or does anybody have any questions regarding injury? Yeah. Because I heard that some people are not training at the moment because they feel like... I, I wanted to ask you, we were discussing this before, if you could uh, review the thing where if you start to feel an injury while you're running, yes. how to, how to yeah. recognize? Because in the, in the first talk we talked about this and when an injury subsides while running, <laughs> it's normally just a muscular tension or you know something that goes away while running out. If an injury persists or gets worse while running, then you should stop. And you need to give it a rest because then there is inflammation or something like that. Okay, so that is normally the, 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 the rule of thumb for injuries. And if the pain remains the same? No, if the, as I said, if the pain doesn't subside, you have to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Have you heard a lot of runners that get nauseous or dizzy? Uh, you know, sometimes when you slow down, you start to get nauseous and dizzy, or you know, you definitely don't want to stop. And I've heard a lot of people say that. Yeah, but that's normally to do with blood pressure. So if you are, if you tend to have a low blood pressure, once you start to lose electrolytes, the blood pressure lowers even more. So for those people that are experiencing dizziness, I would recommend more isotonic drinks. Okay, and fruits like the oranges. Because what happens is that if your body uses salts and, and, and other minerals like, like uh, magnesium, potassium, calcium, blood levels might drop even further. And while you're running, you might have experienced because you have ten, you're tensing your body. But when you stop running, all of a sudden the muscles relax, your blood uh, uh, pressure drops even more, and that's when you experience dizziness. In those cases, if that's after a race, what you should do is lie down, Put your feet up on a chair or on a bench or something, and you'll be you'll be fine. Because that by putting your feet up, the blood, the blood goes from your legs to your core and to your head, and it will increase the blood pressure around that core. Okay. After running, should you keep um, walking or like after you finish? I would celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you do is, I mean, you won't feel like walking that much. <laughs>
being quite good, uh, quite relaxed. But after a couple of kilometers, uh, suddenly there was like a, a, a notch up of about 10 beats per minute. And uh, I uh, slowed down, slowed down, down some more, about half a minute per kilometer, and it just wouldn't come down more than a couple of beats until about 25, 27 minutes later when I felt the traffic light. Mm -hmm. So could this be a sign of uh, too much stress, too much uh, adding for too, too much, need for rest, or extra rest? I don't know how experienced you are as a runner. Because you should, you should be able to feel your body. You, 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 if you have run before, and I think it happens to many runners, is that you know your, your cardiovascular condition gets so advanced, and your your muscular system will often lag behind, and that this frequency can cause some instability or you know some some imbalances in the body. Um, but you are the one who who, who should be listening to your body. Should this happen more frequently? Then you know maybe you get some other factors, some other uh, uh, factors checked out. Um, but what I would say is, um, in general, um, it is not very normal for for a normal preparation to all of a sudden have your your heart rate to, or your heart rate go up by by ten or by more. Even if it's ten, it's still okay. But if it would be if we could become more, okay, then you need to check that out. Definitely. Yeah, it was like. Uh, uh, and for how long did that persist? For how long did that persist? About 25 minutes. Yeah. And not uh, near the maximum. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Just a little bit above the threshold where I uh, didn't want to go yeah. and just stop yeah. 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 I've experienced the same uh, when I was training for uh, America and, and Germany, this war. And uh, it was also because I was not completely fit myself. My body was fighting up a bug or something. So sometimes you don't even know why, and body your immune system is fighting off a virus at the same time. You might not even be noticing it yet because it's in an early stage. But once you start running and you, you deprive, because when you when you exercise, you deprive your immune system a bit, and then afterwards it gets stronger. So it's, I think it's important that you know you just listen to your body, and when it gives you that signal, pace down a bit. I think that that would be my advice. Okay, because it could be a, a, a number of factors. Okay, uh, form of the day, a virus, overtrain. Okay, I think this is the general. Yeah. Or maybe all three. You know. Maybe we were thinking about poetry. Yeah. What was the question again? Yes. I would say the day after, um, I mean, you, you're really well prepared. So, you know, it's not going to be a big shock. I mean, when you train for a marathon, it's very different because you train up to 30 kilometers, not more, 31. So those last 10 is like 25% on top. And that will feel the day extra, the day after and the day after and the day after because your body hasn't been there. You've run already almost like 18 kilometers. Some have even done more. Oh, <laughs> 17. <laughs> 17 and a half, no? Something like that? Wasn't the training schedule? It depends. I mean, we are all different. That was just to make it clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me, me look like this. <laughs> like, for me, that kilometer is like high, but sorry, I don't know. <laughs> so, what is the maximum you ran? The maximum I ran was like 9.50. And for you? Well, then, then my, my recommendation would definitely be to, to really start slow, okay? I even spoke about doing the 5 to 10 minute warm-up before. Let the first 5 kilometers be your warm-up then, okay? Reserve all the energy you have. So, and you will be feeling sore after the race, okay? If you make it to the end, the day after, and maybe the, 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 a couple of days after, you'll be very, very scared. So have a warm bath or a hot tub, okay? And um, maybe get some like arnica oil, which you know um, helps circulation going up. But it's you know it's part of the game. So 
you haven't you haven't done the, 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 the full preparation, that means that you know the consequences might be you'll be a bit more sore than the rest. Yeah, well, most probably I will not be able to finish the No, but in, in general, I would say, you know, just just view that as an, as, as an experience, okay? If you don't make it in the end, and it's, it's, it's legitimate, if you haven't done the, pre the full preparation, then that is fine. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to injure yourself just by trying to end it, because there's a lot of people that get, like, um, chronic injuries because, you know, they didn't do the preparation and they didn't make it till the end, but don't ask me how, okay? Um, so what I would recommend to you in this particular case would be to just enjoy it. Go with the flow, see what your body can do, see how far you can push yourself. And if you, if you, if you can finish it, even by walking the last bit, I mean, you know, just do your best and do the best you can. And I think that is everything that you should be doing. Anybody can do anyway. Okay? You've been part of the group, you've been part of the training. I mean, I think that's also a matter of its own already. Okay, so have a, have a warm bath after the race, if you have very sore, uh, some arnica oil will help you to suit up the, 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 the tired muscles, some really light stretching, okay, food wise I would say, as I always say, healthy, fresh and unprocessed, okay, any other questions? body is tired and then your muscles are tired, then definitely that is a big extra to get some tension off. And I would say don't do it on the day before, but maybe if you have a training on Thursday, then do it on Friday. If you have your last training on Wednesday, then do it on Thursday. Okay, so I would say between Wednesday and Friday would be a very nice way to, to get extra tension off by having a massage. Johnny, when he was training us, he said if you got an ask for sports massage, Depends on the master and on the experience. Okay. Obviously, I mean, everybody, you know, you should be a master or somebody who knows about runners, you know, about, about how much mileage you already have in your legs. I mean, so but in general, in the general, a master will always help you to, to relax in general. And by relaxing the muscle in general, you will you will recover that muscle as well, much better. So, but. Um, but if, that, if it feels like it's too hard or too, too painful, it doesn't matter to, to take this uh, notch down. I would definitely say. Yeah. But it's definitely recommended that you have a problem like that before, especially for the, for the legs. Too. It, 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 it is a big relief, actually. Yeah. So this weekend is so good to do a long run? Well, it depends on what, what, what your long run is planned like. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen the schedule for this week, but I think that the long run is not longer than last week, so. Um, no. 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 So it's 10, 15, I think I think I would go for 15. Yeah. And in your case, maybe you do 10 or 11. Okay. Any other questions? Any other one? Any other uh, person with pains or aches or you know doesn't know? When you experience a bike crash during the race, should you would you recommend to just run slower? Cramps are very, uh, very common for people that don't drink enough water, that have too many caffeinated or sugary drinks before, and not the, the, the right food before a race. So if you have enough liquid in your body and enough magnesium, uh, potassium, calcium, and the salt, and that salts, then you won't normally experience cramps. That's just a result of a, of a mineral deficiency. Okay, and the, the muscle get tired, and then all of a sudden it cramps up because. The, 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 the muscle uh, function, uh, the cell function, doesn't work properly anymore because of lack of minerals. 
But in this case, still, I don't know. Well, if you get cramped during the run, you should, you should stretch the cramp out. So if you feel cramped, you're not going to keep running with the cramp. But if you feel a cramp in your, in, your, in your hamstring, you will stretch out your hamstring. If you feel a cramp in your, in your uh, ham, uh, hamstring, yeah, sorry, in your uh, calf, uh, and if you feel it in your hamstring, you stretch your hamstring out as much as you can. Uh, so and normally it will take the tension off and you, will can, you can keep going for a bit. But then in the next refreshing pose, have two or three oranges. You got some minerals in, okay? And some isotonic drink, not water at that point. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it now it, it goes by, by time here, and you see it's, it's maximum uh, one and a half hours if, you're, uh, if your goal is over two hours. So I would say between one hour and ten minutes and one and a half hour maximum. Okay? And, and, don't, and in this case, it's not about the mileage, it's about the time you run. Okay? But what so, is that now? Sorry? Why, why are you going by mileage? Because the objective is by kilometers. No, because the objective is what here is by time. Yeah, but I'm just surprised that we, you know, we go by time, uh, time objectives. Well, actually, it doesn't matter how much time you run, it's important thing to do a certain distance. Because we had a certain preparation time available. At that time, we, we spoke about that with, uh, with, with uh, Hazel. Is that when we started this project, we couldn't we couldn't do that approach because we did we only had 15 weeks, and most people were really unfit. And that meant that the first two weeks we couldn't actually run a lot. I, I think most of you remember that in the first two weeks it was more adaptation towards physical activity. <laughs> sounds, sounds awful. <laughs> um, but that was actually why we did that. Um, it's because the time didn't allow us to go by kilometers. We had to break it down time-wise and say, okay, what is your goal? Is your goal over two hours? Okay, then you need to do that long of a running in the long run. Okay? Now, for this Sunday or for this Saturday, I would recommend that you run between one hour and ten for the fasters and for, uh, for the faster runners. And between uh, 1 hour and 20 and 1 hour and 30 minutes for the slower runners, but you just don't pace it too much. Don't go too fast. Sorry for that. And don't go too fast, okay? Because you've done the big chunk of your training already. You don't want to go so fast that you're going to injure yourself now in the last week. I think that is, that is the most important objective, not to get injured. Okay, the body is 